Welcome everyone. Today I will be showing you how to defend Mongol tower rushes. This is something a lot of people are struggling with still to this day. Uh, I do think that Mongol tower rush is strong, but there are ways to defend it and there are ways to kind of minimize the damage and you got to be careful how to pick your battles, where to send your villagers and how to defend it properly. So I'm going to show you two replays. One replay is where I have a little bit of a better spawn. The second one is I have a pretty bad spawn. So uh, the two civs that struggle the most against Mongol Tower Rush are uh, French and HRE. And those are the oops, those are the two civs that I'm going to be showing you guys uh, how to defend Mongol Tower Rush because other civs usually have some ways of dealing with it. So let's get started. So uh, I'm playing here, these are custom games, these are not ladder games, I ask Core, one of the, uh, I'm not sure what rank he is right now, rank 30, 40, 50 in the world. I asked him to, uh, if he can play some custom games because he used to tower rush a lot, uh, he still does. Um, so I figured I asked him for custom games, asked him to tower rush me and then try to explain it to you guys and, you know, help you if possible. So. First things first, um, versus Mongo, if you're French, I think it's a good okay. idea to open with double scout because you want to be collecting sheep with one scout. And with the second scout, you always want to make sure to have it near Uvu of Mongo player so that you can see um, if they're going barracks or not. So one thing that you need to identify very quickly, if there's going to be barracks or, or not, because that's a pretty big tell if you're going to get tower rushed or not. So. One thing that I will try to do here is once I scout the Uvo, I know its position so I can check uh, for barracks. But also what you can do is go near TC and check how much wood they're gathering. For example, if they have a, a gold right here and wood on the other side, they don't need to get wood for Gur to, to mine gold, right? So if the gold was here and their TC is right here, that means that they're going to tower rush you. So you know well in advance. Um, or if you just see a lot of workers just staying on wood constantly, that means that they're getting enough wood to make a barracks, because barracks is 150 wood. So here I'm trying to see with how many workers he's chopping. Luck, sadly, I couldn't get uh, any info from this angle, so I go around, and then I would get confirmation that there is barracks. Now, one good thing against Mongol tower rushes, and this is no matter what civ you are, um, Mongol will usually send their Khan very very early across the map to give themselves vision and to scout your base to know where to tower rush. So one thing that you can abuse is they will not be gathering sheep around the map. So if you play Civ that can potentially go second scout, you can collect all the sheep on the map pretty much for free and it's going to allow you enough food to stay under TC for a very very long time. So here I see that the barracks is here. And I've seen a lot of people try to make barracks and defend. I do think it's possible to go Dark Age barracks and defend. But uh, I found a, very, a much simpler way to do this is just go fast feudal again with whatever sieve you want. And build an archery range and try to deny further tower rushing. So you're going to get one or two hours up against you. But you should try to deny the rest of them. Alright, so... Here I am delivering the sheep. With this one, I'm still collecting sheep. I'm going to go all the way around the map. I see his Khan here, and I'm trying to locate where the spearmen are going and where the tower rush will be happening. So I try to click on the uh, villager here, do some damage, almost lose the scout. And I see two villagers as well. So two villagers is, is decently committed tower rush. I have four workers on uh, gold here. Um, and I had eight or sorry 10 on food because i wanted to tech up to feudal as fast as possible now i have three on the landmark getting school of cavalry and i'm gonna get uh, a bunch of wood straight away and this is a very important thing that people can do and should do against mongols so what i'm doing right here is i'm gonna get as much gold as i can usually i like to get 100 as french so i can get at least one knight so i can harass my opponent at the same time while they're tower rushing me so I'm going to get 100 gold and I'm going to delete the mining camp before he touches it. If you do that, Mongol player will not receive the raiding bonus. That's the bonus that when they destroy a building, when they set the building on fire, they get uh, food and gold. 
So I delete it so that they don't get that bonus, right? So I saw that the Villager Spearmen are going here. I delete it. And he proceeds to tower. I put a tower here. But because I canceled the uh, goal, he repositions here so it's closer to the wood line and blocks the gold at the same time which is you know pretty pretty standard so i know that his next point of attack is going to be behind the wood lines and that's the main main thing that you're going to get to tower rush when you play french is your gold and your wood line so that's something that you need to be aware of so make a little wall here just to delay him a little bit and um yeah i'm getting feudal as you can see, he's nowhere close to feudal because he didn't even start getting gold. So I'm already very, very far ahead on tech. So the only thing you need to do is not allow insane amounts of towers to go up and you'll be more than fine. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit here. He's getting the tower. Mind you, Mongol cannot just YOLO go tower here now because then I'll destroy this tower. So they kind of need to connect towers. Otherwise I can just pull nine villagers and destroy this tower if he has no protection under it. Uh, and that's going to be a failed Mongol tower rush. So here he gets the first tower, gold is denied, and then he's going to go on this side. Again, the reason why he's not chopping through instantly is because he needs the towers to somewhat connect. Because it's safer that way. So he's going to build a tower here, and this is also a safe tower. You know, he doesn't know if he can get a tower here, he doesn't have vision, he doesn't know if there's a wall or something like that. And the moment I tech up to feudal, you can see me throw down archery range. I got plenty of food and I'm soon uh, going to queue up the moment I have food, which is going to be once I start gathering it. I'm going to have enough gold for a knight, which is very nice. He's throwing it down the tower here. I see it. You know, I'm scouting the whole time, so I see what's happening. I try to pull villagers here, which was a, a mistake. But the moment you have even one archer, you can start mitring against spears. And make sure you put your scouts on Khan, because Khan takes insane amounts of damage from scouts, because it counts as a scout itself. So he tower rushes my wood, my gold, and I just move to the other wood. Now let's say the tower was a bit worse for me, which in the second game you will see the, the spawn that I got was much worse, so that people wouldn't say like, oh, but you know, you got a really good spawn, that's why I defend it. Uh, even if he def had another tower here and here, at this point I can just go to the middle wood. Like, how is he gonna prevent it? He has spears and I have archers, so there's nothing you can do about it, right? So you need to take the map control away from Mongols. He's gonna move around here to try to tower. I predict it because, you know, he had workers here. He just finished the tower, so where else is he gonna go? Uh, I deny that and now I see there's no worker, so I knew that he sent them home, which soon I'm gonna intercept them on this side. Now, I'm getting a knight. One thing that people also do, they play way too passive against Mongols when they're getting tower rush. So they're very... people are usually worried like, oh god, I gotta build a ram right now to defend these towers. These towers are up there, they're denying my resources, but I don't really care. Like, I'm getting wood, I'm not currently needing to mine gold, plus I can go to one of these further uh, goals. I have all the map control. So what I'm gonna do is I sent these three around to try and catch villagers that I saw that they're escaping through the north side. And I'm gonna send, like I looked at the minimap, and even without scouting, I knew that he's gonna be mining gold here or here for feudal. So what I do is I send my knight into this gold, and if he didn't have villagers here, I would go to the other side. Now, what this knight does is it forces him to make more units, and it also prevents fast castle rush from Mongols, because that's usually their follow-up from this. So, I get gold here, I start mining gold, my economy is 100% fine, I didn't lose any workers, and here I deny the gold, I don't manage to kill any workers, I catch the workers on the left side. So basically I'm ahead, couple of workers now, two killed, and also French has faster production, so I'm feeling uh, pretty good about my current spot. And as you can see, like, I'm not rushing to get these down. He's gonna upgrade him soon. That's fine. Don't need to worry about it. So instead what I do is I focus on denying his gold to prevent fast castle rush. So I'm gonna just rally my units across the map. And what I like to do against Mongols is you need to keep an, a track of Uvu what the, uh, building production uh, he has, right? 
So you want to make sure, like if I saw double archer range, I would know like, okay, he's kind of committed. Um, maybe I should, you know, continue making knights. If I saw mass spearmen, I would not make knights, I would make archers. So it's very important that you know what they're doing. Or if you see no production buildings, like in this case, and you see uh, one, two, and then five villagers inside, seven villagers on gold, that means that he's going for castle, right? So now I know that he's not committing to units, so I'm trying to harass him as much as I can, and I'm trying to deny the gold and just kind of get my economy further ahead compared to him. So here I go, I lose a knight, which is pretty bad, uh, but again, you know, he's not mining gold, and every once in a while I'll try to dip in here and interrupt the, the mining. Again, like I said, just denying as much as I can. Because against Mongols you can't really go into food line and, or wood line because the TC is so, so close. So here I'm scouting the uh, Ubu and I see pasture, so I know he's kind of setting up. He's not gonna go around get food potentially right now, maybe a bit later. And behind this, I am getting uh, Iron Undermash for plus one armor. And I think I'm gonna get Wheelbarrow here as well. And I'm slowly gonna attack to castle. Like if you look at my resources, I'm actually gonna hit the castle faster than Mongols, which is not what is supposed to happen. And you can see that he's also trying to rush castle. But because of everything that happened, his resources are not looking great. The tower rush kind of was successful, but not really. So yeah. Um, in this specific game, I decided to go fast castle. And I would probably suggest that that is the best idea if you play French, because if you try to all in, it's not gonna work most of the time because they have TC next to the resources. So you're gonna need to commit a lot in order to actually kill them. And even then they're gonna be able to get to castle and then have access to better units. Now, another thing that I saw, right, when I attacked is he has two towers, that is 200 wood. And again, that is a lot of resources that he's investing into defense, which he never would if I never attacked across the map, which proves that it's very, very important to be <coughs> aggressive, excuse me. So I'm gonna start my castle here and I'm gonna speed up. From this point on, the game kind of continues as normal, quote unquote, but I would definitely say that uh, I am ahead. And that is pretty much how you defend it as French and pretty much all the civs. Now, versus Mongol Tower Rush, there's a lot of back and forth in terms of where to actually let go of your resources, when to fight for it. But getting an archery range super fast enables you to deny, to deny further rushing and put pressure on the Mongol player, which is what your focus should be. I'm gonna just play this game out. I get Guild Hall. And I go multiple barrack production because I know that he has barracks. So spears are potential, you know, play that he can do already. So what I did is I went man at arms because I knew that his castle is delayed and I tried to just deny as much gold as I can. Uh, pretty fast I got the uh, plus two armor for uh, arrows. And I just rallied two men at arms since they're across the map. I just run them into gold. The moment I saw that there's no workers in gold, I knew that he's probably building the uh, step readout, or at least he ran away, which works for me either way. So the next thing I do is I just go next to Ubu, and I again, I check, okay, what production buildings do you have? I check, and I see stables, barracks that he had, on other stables, and I know it's going to be Lancers, right? So you can already prepare with more barracks. I think very soon after I start um, a hardened spearman. I'm already making spearman. I'm gonna start upgrades soon, and I just go aggressive with Ubu. You know, uh, I try to deny the stone production. I kill a villager here, boom. And with the scout here, I saw that he's trying to get food. So I'm just trying to stay active with scouts, trying to deny food, deny any resource that I can, because like I said, I have the map control from the moment I hit feudal. So this is very, very important. And again, from this point on, this is very hard for Mongol player to come back, in my opinion. He got his stone denied. Even if you rebuild stone here, he needs to move all the buildings. His gold is kind of exposed, and I'm already basically making the counter units before he actually made them. So soon I'm gonna start making crossbows as well. 
Again, I'm gonna just speed this up so you guys can see how it ends. He loses the Lancers because he needs to protect this. Eventually, it's the run, but again, not looking good for him. I go for the food because I knew he was getting it here earlier. I check the stone to make sure he doesn't have Ulu there. And I never even kill the towers, by the way. I just left them. Some men at arms in the gold, and his eco is completely trashed. He tries counterattack here, which I have enough reinforcements because my economy is doing great. 56 workers against 44. Really, really good for me. And, uh. Yeah, that is pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Here I go for the Rams, and I just go for the Kelp. Well, kill. I just go to 9 gold, which is kill. Now, I'm going to show you guys another game with HRE, me defending Mongol Tower Rush. Uh, because, like I said, French and HRE is something that people tell me the most that they're struggling to defeat Tower Rush. Mongol Tower Rush. So I figured I should show you guys with those two sets how to defend. And again, uh, you know, the guy that I'm playing against, he is like top 20, 30, 40 in the world. And he used to main only Mongols, so he knows what he's doing with tower rushing. That's my point. It's not like some guy that never tried tower rush. He he knows what he's doing and knows what to go for. Now this is me playing HRE. Um, I'm starting the standard build. Three on food, three on gold with prelates straight away. And my goal is the same as in um, with French. I want to get to do as fast as possible and try to deny towers. Now I'll explain, I did something different to defend in this one compared to French, even though archer range most of the time is the right answer. So, uh, let's talk about the spawn. So, last game I had a very bad, oh, very good spawn, sorry. Uh, my gold was kind of far away, my wood lines were in the back, and that's a really good spawn. And we actually did a, a game before this and I had a good spawn again so I said let's remake let's go for uh, let's try to get a bad spawn for me so that uh, you know I can actually show people what it looks like when you have a worse spawn so first things first my gold is next to berries so one tower here would deny two resources which is pretty big right my gold is exposed it's in the front uh, my wood lines if he makes a tower here he denies both wood lines with one tower which is obviously insane value. So if he were to make a tower here and then tower here, I would have no wood and I would have to go so far away from my main TC that it would be pretty, pretty bad for me because the investment of him denying deny me wood is very low uh, for the amount of resources he would deny me, right? So I go for one scout here. Um, same thing applies, like I'm getting my sheep. And here I start to move to check the Uvu and I see the workers and I see that they're moving south. So obviously he scouted me earlier, right? Um, oh no, he didn't scout, sorry. So he's going around the map to... He actually, that's interesting. He didn't scout, but he actually had a really good tower placement. So he sees chapel here and Thing is, if he went for gold, this is where the adjustment part comes in. And this is why it's important to know why and how tower rushes work. So, uh, I was surprised that he didn't go to deny my gold, right? Because it's very open. Now I know, it's because he didn't scout. So he went behind and was probably like, he's gonna tower rush whatever is there. Now, this turned out to be good because of the, the content that it provided. So. I thought maybe last game because I went archery range that he's gonna try to deny wood so he can continue tower rushing. So what ended up happening is uh, I got my gold uh, left, but if he did tower rush here, I would have just done the same thing I did with French. I would have gotten as much gold as I could just to have it for an upgrade or something. And then I would just go archery range here because if he towered here, right? It would take him so long to get all the way around that only one tower would very likely be possible in which I would have archer range so further tower rushing would stop. So the fact that he didn't scout that the gold was there and went for straight here actually worked out better for him, in my opinion. So 
I knew that his units went this way. My scout is now going to find sheep. Like I said, Mongol will only have Khan and Khan will be forward. So I'm just collecting and soaking all the sheep on the map. Uh, especially because I'm HRE and you know you gather uh, Rooster much faster under the chapel. Now one thing, uh, please, the other landmark, the palace, mine work, mine twerk, whatever it's called. It sucks. Don't make it, please. A lot of people ask me and... Oh, it's cheap for upgrades. It sucks. Okay. Uh, chapel is much better. So just make chapel. Okay. Uh, look at it this way. The upgrades in the other landmark are cheaper, but you gather faster with this one. Thus, you're going to be able to get those upgrades anyway. Except this lasts whole game and provides you a limited amount of buffs to your villagers for wood, you know, gold, food, whatever, wherever you place it. So... It, it's just a way better landmark. Just trust me, no one. All right. So he comes here. He sees the uh, landmark. And I actually didn't see the tower, by the way. Look at this. He's building a tower right here. And I see the spear and obviously attacking. But I didn't see the tower. So the reason why I thought this is a really good replay, because a lot of things go wrong for me here. So the first thing is I placed the landmark. I had no idea about the tower. And my landmark is nowhere close to finishing, as you can see. There's like 25% left. And the tower finishes, and it's hitting my workers. So, obviously I can't cancel the landmark. I have to finish, so I have to pull all the workers, which is not great for the economy. And he tries sniping the workers, but I do a little bit of micro. Still lose a worker there. And yeah, only one worker lost. So not the worst thing, but also... Having to pull workers like this is kind of kind of sucks, right? So, what he's trying to do is just completely deny this and, and make it unusable. Not allow me to use chapel at all. Uh, it would probably have been better if he already started making tower around. But maybe he just wanted to secure the location because, again, chapel is very, very important for HRE. I managed to kill the Khan here with scout and villagers. So this is the thing that I wanted to show you guys. My wood line is getting towered this game and my gold is free. So in the moment, I decided to just go for men at arms because I'm playing HRE. HRE has access to men at arms in feudal and I decided, okay, I'm getting a lot of food on the map, right? I'm getting free sheep. I have berries on this side, which are also safe. I got berries here, I got berries here. I got deer, deer. So all the food sources are free for me to get, right? They're away from towers. The only thing he's doing is denying wood. So instead of going archers and investing, making units that cost wood, I can just go men at arms and just kind of try to overwhelm and again, deny his resources, which is very, very important. So he goes for another tower here. And I know it's only a matter of time until that the tower finishes on this side. I even scouted it, even though I don't need to. Because I know he's going to be towering there. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get as much wood as possible. Which is why you can see I have 11 on wood. I'm trying to get as much wood as possible before he hits feudal. And upgrades his towers. Because then the wood line will be completely denied. So I'm just getting a lot of villagers there. Only 5 on food right now. I produced 1 or 2 men at arms only. 2 right here. And I'm just getting that juicy juicy wood. Uh, gold is still being mined. I have one prelate here and I have one prelate in the chapel because it still works for bonuses on the uh, food right here and the wood. So I send my scout across the map and I think this is the f yeah this is the first time I'm scouting his base. So I see that his gold is away from his TC. So what did I do last game? I sent the knight across the map to deny the gold. What am I going to do this game? Instantly, I'm going to send units across and deny the gold again. Look, I even see that he's sending more workers to gold, which is very common. Uh, the most common transition for Mongols is to go tower rush into pass castle and go men at arms or lancers, because usually people are not prepared and they're stuck in feudal. So right now I have three barracks producing men at arms. I'm getting the uh, armor upgrade and I'm going for the siege engineering this time because chapel, this game compared to the French game is much more important uh, source of income for me than French last game that he denied a goal that I could just go somewhere else. So I wanted to get these towers done. 
or down and I'm slowly gonna move more workers all the way there which is not perfect initially I started to go here but I didn't know he has a tower there too and I just try to get wood for one ram so I can get these towers down I get my men at arms across and again if you look at the resources he has 340 gold so even if he had enough food he cannot go castle because I denied his gold uh, and I noted he has no more production buildings I noted he's trying to rush castle so I'm going from gold to gold and trying to find where he's trying to mine it and deny it and again further delay everything this con was very annoying here I think he killed a villager or two, uh, which, like I said, very, very annoying to deal with because the other arms are very slow. Um, so here I'm running out of food. I see the engineering completed and I'm just trying to get 300 wood so I can knock those towers down. And at this point, this part of like guide tutorial is already over. Like this is, this is what you got to do, right? From here on out, it's more like just a normal gameplay, right? But this is the most important part. And it's very important to not panic against Mongols. A lot of people that, that play, even at a high level, uh, that are like, you know, top 20, 30, 40, 50 in the world, they sometimes pull workers and they try to like get the towers down. Just don't panic, you know? Just take it easy. Know that these towers are an investment, right? They're 100 wood each. And these two workers are not mining anything, right? So he's down on workers. The only thing you gotta do is try not to take damage and not run your villagers left and right. Just kind of pick where you're gonna go and try to defend it. Like here, I'm getting wood. I got some men at arms to try to defend from Khan. Um, my scout scouts here, the, the gold miners are here. So I send these all the way around. And obviously with this amount seven, I know he's trying to get castle. So I come here and I beat his ass. He actually didn't see this and loses all the villagers. And he's finally got step read up. Getting castle. But soon so am I. Now, uh, like I said, the guide is until this point, pretty much. After what happens doesn't really matter. I'll play out the replay anyway. But even if he has those seven works surviving, uh, if you look at the situation on the map right now, I'm about to bust these towers very, very soon. Yeah, I'm making a red right here. I'm about to bust towers and the map control is uh, back in my favor. So I'm getting as much food as possible here. And compared to the French game, I did make a lot more units. I have eight men at arms here and uh, five here. So that's 1.3k food, which is my why my castle was a bit delayed. And also I could have denied this gold a little bit better. But I get my own cast, uh, castle with Ravens Cathedral. I pick up three relics. And again, I feel like I'm in a really good position. I resume wood mining next to chapel. I'm gonna put the uh, prelate suit back in. I'm just getting the, the relics. And uh, yeah, he's making his men at arms. I'm making my men at arms. I'm producing. I'm soon gonna upgrade, I think, as well. And once you get the relics in as HRE, uh, you don't need to mine gold anymore, and it just frees up a lot of your supply and kind of adds a bunch of free workers for you to uh, for you to work with. So here I go for some archer ranges because there's so men at arms. I'm gonna make some crossbows. You can go knights against Mongols because they're very exposed to being harassed uh, because they can't make walls. But if I saw, but because I saw so many uh, early pastures, I knew that all his food income will be under TC most likely, so I didn't bother. But if he doesn't have pastures and if he has to collect food like here or there, going knights is also pretty good. And uh, yeah, I'm going to just speed this up. Obviously, he instantly went for uh, improved siege engineering, which allows him to make siege on the battlefield. And uh, that's probably kind of the biggest worry you have playing against Mongols. Again, here, I got a bunch of units. I just run it into gold because I know that he needs gold. <laughs> He's making two mangonels, and the moment I see this, I run back. I got my own siege workshop, start making springholds, and I just keep massing units 
cleaned all the towers over here. Uh, I got three relics, which is more than you need. And another thing that I did is, again, I did a counterattack with men at arms. They got plus two armor against arrows, so I'm just gonna run them under TC because I know that he is going for an attack, which is more or less all in at this point. Like, if it doesn't work, the three relics are just gonna put me so, so far ahead. And if you look at my worker split, 19 on food, 29 on wood. Again, I don't need any on gold. Got some workers here. Um, I got berries here. Got berries there. Starting to do some farms. And the only thing I need to do now is defend against this push. That's it. Here he's trying to get good shots, but I micro back and forth with crossbows. I got hit twice there. But it doesn't matter. It's time for the men at arms. He has nothing else. Oh, yeah, and meanwhile, men at arms on the other side of the map killed like 20 workers, by the way. GG! So, once again, Mongol Tower Rush is viable. Uh, sometimes I take too much damage, right? I take more damage than I should. Sometimes I defend it really well. Sometimes I send a knight, I kill three villagers on gold, and Mongol player leaves. But, like I said, it's very important knowing what your advantages are, what your disadvantages are, and how and when you should pick your battles with towers. And I wanted to show you guys these two games, and I'm glad that we got two games that were different, with two different sieves, because they show a situation where I had a better spawn and I left the towers up, I didn't touch them, I just went for a counterattack, and it shows one game where the tower completely denied my wood line and I just adjusted. I went for, um, what's it called? I went for um, men at arms and just ditched archers. Now, if I was French in this game and my wood got denied and my gold didn't, I would probably do something along the lines of like go double stables and just rally knights into his TC and just kill the workers over and over because again I would have access to food and gold so I would just use that to my advantage to punish the opponent so uh, and also by going knights you would have map control right so Khan wouldn't be able to harass you and you can just get wood somewhere else so uh, what a lot of people do is the most common mistake that I see is they get tower rush and they're like oh god I can't move out Oh, I'm so scared to move units across the map because, you know, if I send units across the map, I'm going to die back at home. You're not going to die. They're just towers. Like, they can't move. And the spears that they have, I mean, just don't make buildings super far away from your TC and uh, you will be fine. And another mistake that I see people do is they get blacksmith instantly and they try to get a ram instantly. By, by, by over defending, you're actually killing yourself. So sometimes I see games where the player takes zero damage, but they overcommit to defending so much that they actually kill themselves, right? They go for blacksmith, they upgrade CG engineering super early, they go for ram, and they get the towers and they're like, yeah, dude, there it is, I defended it. And then you see Mongol players reach castle age and they die to three lancers. So you, you gotta try to find a balance, but you see how much I'm focusing on denying his goal and preventing the castle age up. Now, there are situations, uh, you know, this, someone might be wondering this, what happens if he has gold next to his TC? Well, he can't have everything, right? So if he has gold next to his TC and woodline, then his food will either be far away or his uvu. Then you just go and kill his Uvo, just kill all the production. Just like I denied the gold, right? Just go kill all his production. Kill the Uvo, kill the production buildings or force them to move and then go from stone to stone and don't let him get the Uvo up because that will ruin the double unit production and he will literally make half the units. So um, there's always something that you can do. Remember that, you just gotta, it's like solving a puzzle in a way in the middle of the game based on the map spawn, you gotta figure out what the best place to defend is yourself, uh, what you should give up and what you should attack. So that's it. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going. If you're watching on YouTube, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what kind of other guides you would like to see. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed the, uh, the guide.
Twitch gamers, let's keep 